Welcome to this edition of Miles Ahead and you join us in a car park in Ascot to look at this, the Lamborghini Urus. Now 15 years ago the thought of Lamborghini coming out with an SUV would have seemed slightly preposterous although as a manufacturer Lamborghini does have its roots originally in tractors and then in the 80s there was of course the LM002 which was aimed as a massive V12 military vehicle basically and it had owners such as Mike Tyson, Tina Turner, Sylvester Stallone and Pablo Escobar and Colonel Gaddafi. But this being a more civilised time and when you're not traversing your desert state, this is more likely to scale a hugely impressive quarter mile time. Now this is based on the VW platform that has given us cars like the Touareg, the RS Q8, the Bentley Bentayga. Um, but this is very much a Lamborghini spin on that. So it's got the four litre twin turbo V8, produces 650 horsepower and 800 newton meters of torque. It will do naught to 60 in 3.6 seconds. So definitely got that Lamborghini DNA within it. So the starting price of this car is 172,411 pounds. The model tested here, with £56,953 of options comes in at £229,364. Now we'll have a look at some of the key options as we walk around. But as we come in, um, yeah, I mean, it's got the Lamborghini badge on the front. I mean, that is really the main selling point of this car, I think. And it is unmistakably a Lamborghini as well, which is nice. So you get the Matrix LED headlights here, which um, it shares with the Audi. That's good news because they are fantastic. You can get the lower bits down here, all decked out in carbon fiber. Um, you know the options list is extensive as you would expect um, so one of the obvious options to look at at the moment here is the Grigio Keres matte paintwork that tips the scales at £7,962 um, I don't normally like matte paintworks but I think it looks really good on this car I really quite like it um, as we come round you can get the uh, carbon fibre exterior pack which would extend to here um, so the wheels these are the upgraded these are nath matte titanium 22 inch wheels they cost three thousand two hundred pounds now you can get 21s 22s or 23s and it's worth pointing out the brakes at this stage as well because when they were built these were the biggest brakes on a car anywhere they were they are sorry at the front 17.3 inches and they're 14.4 inches at the rear um it's just saying when i passed my driving license uh getting on for 20 years ago now the dream was to have 17 inch wheels and now you get 17 inch brakes anyway you get the tricolor italia flag on the side there just um if you weren't sure where Lamborghini was coming from. I must apologise about the dirt on the side of the car, actually. So I picked this car up um, on Thursday. It's now Sunday. It was clean when I got it. it um, I guess one downside of this uh, Keres Grigio matte paint is it does attract a bit of dirt, but I guess if you can afford 230 grand for the car, you can afford regular trips to the cleaners as well. And we'll come and have a quick look in the rear because obviously the practicality is one of the main elements of this car. So as you can see, you've got the, you've got the sloping, sloping roof line comes across here, but there is still quite a bit of space in the back, um, which I'll demonstrate if I just jump in and get in. So I am six foot two, um, but there's plenty of space in here, head, headroom wise. I mean, it does pinch a bit, but you can recline the seats at the back there. So that does make it, that does give you a bit more head space as well. And you've got the controls for the rear HVAC down here as well. So the engine's not running at the moment. You get heated seats in the rear as well. And uh, my son's car seat's in there just to make sure you can get Isofix in there. So again, 15 years ago, you wouldn't have dreamed of carrying your kit around in your Lamborghini, but there we go. So we come around to the rear, the aggressive styling continues. So you get the black rear lip here and you get the sort of the spoiler at the top there as well. So it's a very, very angular um, rear window here, but it's actually the visibility out the back isn't too bad. Um, I was worried on first view and it might be, but actually it's absolutely fine. Um, you can see these exhausts, um, we'll, we'll have a listen to those on the drive along. I mean, they do make a fair old racket as well. Um, this is, you know, Lamborghini have taken this platform and they have very much lamborghini it up. It's very aggressive in styling, in sound, in performance and everything else. And you get a nice big Lamborghini badge across the back there just in case you're in any, any doubt as to what this car was but anyway just to wrap up the look around the outside we'll just have a quick look in the boot so I've left all the stuff in there for my youngest and you just get loads of space in here did an airport run the other day as well four adults luggage five of us in the car no drama and you get just good quality materials in here which start here so you get the um the board at the back is decked out in that nice leather with the green stitching which we'll have a closer look at when we get inside speaking of which We'll have a look at the interior now. So I mentioned the similarities with Audi. There's quite a lot of you, if you're an Audi owner, you'll recognize that key, but um, 
obviously you get the Lamborghini on the back and you get the Lamborghini logo down there. But um, yeah, the two two-time touch and all that sort of stuff to open the boot, uh, very Audi. And they have given you a key holder in here, which is useful. So somewhere to put the key when you're driving along. Obviously you might not have the yellow press tag on there if it was your car. So points to note when we're in here, so you get the, um, this is a bit of a gimmick, but I do quite like it, this sort of fighter pilot style, style start. So you push that. And you hear that V8 come to life in the background there. Um, again, this, this is where it gets classically Audi. So you'll recognize this for this dual touchscreen setup from you know uh, the A6 model onwards. Now that might sound like, oh, you know, it's a Lamborghini, it's got the Audi setup. That's no bad thing. I really, really like this setup. I think it's incredibly easy to use and, and you're just very easy to get to grips with. Um, so we've got a couple of options up here. So we've got, um, I've had to write down the prices of all these because there are so many on here. So we've got the big interior carbon fiber pack, which is 3,675. So that extends all the way across here through here and across back and there's um on the back rear door cards as well and here beside the cup holders is all carbon fiber as well um i quite like it actually i think it looks really good um just sort of suits the interior of this car and i, I really like the green stitching as you can see on the seating down here um i think again that really suits the profile of this car as well um it's just a nice place to be. This is every inch a luxury SUV, I have to say. And, and one thing that's really impressed me is the quality of the materials in here. I was, I was expecting it to be nice, of course, you know, it's a 230,000 pound car, but it's got, the, um, it's got the upper and lower leather packages, which come in at 5,000 pounds. And like the steering wheel's nice to the touch as well. And like the flappy paddles are there. They're not too insistent, but they're just there. And, you know, they do encourage you to use them when you want to. And it's just, yeah, I think, I think they've done a really, really good job in here. They've taken, taken the established platform and they've, yeah, put the nice Lamborghini touches on. Obviously, I mean, it's saying Lamborghini in massive letters there isn't too subtle, but I mean, that's come straight out of it. It's the same in the Aventador and Huracan, you get the Lamborghini logo in there as well. Um, so coming across to the driver's view up here, you do get head-up display, um, which you won't, might not get from the camera angle there because you have to be flush on, but that's really useful for um, your motorway driving, that sort of stuff, because you're so high up and it's just such a relaxed engine at those sorts of speeds you don't always feel that you're doing as many miles per hour as you actually are so that's really useful and you get the nice view um, across here as well so that's all customizable um, depending on what you want to view on here um, so if we come across you can cycle through the options across here so have a quick look at what we've been doing so long-term memory so i've done 160 miles in this car uh, just shy of six hours driving we've achieved 18.7 mpg so you know it's a little bit thirsty but what were you expecting um panoramic roof is one of the optional extras as well that comes in at two thousand pounds um you know there's fully openable sunroof uh, you know really nice touch on a day like this um yeah quite nice to have another another optional extra to note as well as the bang and olufsen premium 3d audio that comes in at four and a half thousand pounds it does sound great though it is really good and you can see the tweeters up here um they pop if i open the door they should yeah so they they pop down there and if i close that again press start up they rise from there so yeah that's a nice little touch isn't it and they used to have those in the um in the old aston martins as well the old rising tweeters very bang and olufsen but yeah it's, it's quite a nice touch to have so um yeah all in all as, as, sorry i should mention the drive modes and stuff while we're down here as well so as you can see on the anima which is your drive section you've got strada sport course so sabi is sand tedder off-road neve is snow that's pushing my Italian to the absolute limit. Um, so Strada is obviously your sort of more relaxed driving mode. Sport and course obviously kick things on a bit. We'll have a closer listen to those during the drive along bit. You pull this back to get it into reverse, but to put it into drive, you have to pull the paddle up here to get it to go into first. And then you can select individual driving modes as you go along here as well. Um, yeah, quite easy to get to grips with really. Um, it's got all the self-park functionality and all those sorts of bits and pieces as well. So yeah, it's every inch a 21st century luxury SUV in the Lamborghini guys. Um, yeah, I really like it in here. Like I said, I've been really, really um, impressed with the quality of the materials they've used in here. It does feel like a luxury SUV, but we should move on and judge it on how it performs as a performance SUV. Right, what's the Lamborghini Urus like out on the road? Well, we'll start with that engine though. It's a really, really nice 
fucking sonorous V8 sound you get from that. Obviously, it's fitted with the sport exhaust and all that sort of thing. And it is blindingly fast as well. This car, as we mentioned at the top, 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds. This car does not hang around. Now, we're in course mode at the moment, and that brings with it that wonderful sound comes through. Um, you won't pick up the pops and bangs from the exhaust in from the audio in this, unfortunately, but you know, a nice snuffling from the exhaust as well. I mean, it just bristles with aggressive intent. It's really quite something. But we shall flick it back through to Strada for the moment because we're in a 30 mile an hour zone so we need to calm down a little bit and it's just nice and calm and relaxed it's just those modes are so different between the car it's really it's got split personality which is great they've really engineered this car quite well and the road's going to open up again in a second so I'll go back through into Corsa again and it just oh, immediately sort of like you can feel it bristling it's ready to go and then Boy, oh boy, does it go. And the the gearbox is so different in Corsa than what it is in Strada as well. In Strada, the gear changes are relaxed, they're smooth, it changes up early. It's just, you know, it's very buoyant and nice, pleasant. You put it in Corsa and the gear changes are more like, it's so snappy. And they're more like what you'd find in the Aventador, that single clutch box that's in there. It's so bam, bam, bam through the gear changes and it gives you a real kick in the back. And that's when the 800 newton meters of torque make themselves felt as well and it just heads off to the horizon with alarming speed I mean it's really quite impressive and like I said we're on a decent B road at the moment and dare I say this car's even quite enjoyable down here as well it doesn't feel as big and cumbersome as it would first appear um, now it's not as wide as the Aventador uh, so it feels a bit more nimble than you might expect obviously it's not as nimble and as agile as the Aventador but nor is that gap as wide as first impressions would suggest. You'd think that this car wouldn't hold a candle to an Aventador, but this is a Lamborghini. It feels like a Lamborghini, most remarkably. Um, now, you could crudely suggest that, you know, Lamborghini, they're just built an SUV because everyone has to build an SUV these days. I mean, even Ferrari are about to launch one. You know, that is the way to stay afloat these days, it seems. But they've engineered this so well. They've made this because they can, and they've made it really well. This is a really good car. It's more than just a show pony, although it does work as a show pony as well. And we'll flick back out of um, Corsa, back into Strada, just relax everything off again. And yeah, it just becomes really quiet and just not a pleasant car to be in, really. You forget that you're driving a Lamborghini when you're in Strada mode. And obviously, it attracts a lot of attention, people looking at it and that sort of thing. And you sort of do find yourself in its quieter moments going, why are these people looking at me? What is this? And you, you do forget that you're driving a Lamborghini at times. And I guess that's kind of the point that it will do that everyday family SUV stuff, but it will also do the supercar stuff. I mean, it just straddles both boundaries, I think, really, really well. Um, so out on the motorway, all the sound deadening material works really well, and it will just cruise along at 70 miles an hour. You're barely touching 1500 RPM. Take it much easier now on this drive back. Um, we're in seventh gear, we're doing 47 miles an hour, and we're doing about 1300 RPM. And it's very quiet, and I mean, this, this road undulates quite well, um, quite a bit. It's not the smoothest road surface, it just takes everything in its stride. Um, to be fair to it, even in course mode when the suspension's at its most firm, it still handles these roads really, really well. And um, it does have the active anti-roll bar, which is present in the RSQ8 and the Bentayga, but it's not as intrusive as the setup in those cars. Um, so particularly in the RSQ8, driving it down this same stretch of road here, you fling it in and out of the corners, and it just stays bolt upright. I mean, it's remarkable, but you're aware that the car is doing all that for you. You're aware of the gadgetry at play. It's a more organic feel in this. Um, doesn't override what's going on to the same degree. You throw it into the corners, you can feel the car lean, and yeah, organic's the word. It feels more engaging to drive in that respect because it does it does let the car do what the car wants to do much more. Which is a good thing, which is a good thing. It definitely feels more engaging as a result of that. Um, but you know, even in Strada mode, this car is not slow in any mode, whatever you're doing, it will always take off to the horizon. It's just, yeah, it's remarkably, remarkably good car. Um, and to compare it again to the other cars in the VW group, this does feel like that they've picked out the best of everything in there. Um, in the Strada mode now, we've got these big, luxury, comfortable seats. They've got the massage functionality, they're ventilated. So on those long journeys or when you're commuting, you can just sit there, at the right temperature, heated or air conditioned, and you can have a back massage, and it's just nice. And that's got a similar ride quality as well. It's got the same adaptive air suspension that exists across the group. 
it's got similar ride quality to the, to the Venteca. Now, it's not quite as good as the Venteca as you'd expect. This is, after all, a Lamborghini and not a Bentley. Um, but it also brings together the aggression that you find in the RSQ8. So it's obviously got the same twin turbo four litre V8 as both of those cars as well. So it feels like they've brought together the best of the VW group and made something unique within it as well. It still feels like a Lamborghini and it's a cliche to say it, but it does still feel like it's infused with that Lamborghini DNA. It's not as big and cumbersome as it looks like it will be, you know, for a 2.2, 2.3 tonne family SUV. It's still, you know, you can enjoy this car. It's, you know, the focus is very much on the performance and it is a sort of ludicrous level of performance that it achieves as well. Um, I mean, overall, uh, this car, there's really not much to fault in it at all. I mean, obviously the price perhaps at 230 grand, it's not, um, not exactly your affordable luxury family SUV, but um, you know, if you want a performance twist with it, it does feel like a Lamborghini and it's, it's clear to see why this has been such a big seller for them. I mean, big seller in relative terms. Um, I think I read somewhere that it's boosted uh, Lamborghini's global manufacturing annual run to 17,000 from around sort of three and a half, four thousand. 4,000. I think those numbers are correct. So you can see the effect that the Urus has had on its global sales output. But it's also easy to see why people have flocked to the Urus. Um, it, is, it is a really, really good car. I mean, it does look brash and, you know, those aesthetics won't be for everyone. But if you're in the market for a big, expensive performance SUV, then this is the best big performance SUV out there. This is the superest super SUV going, without doubt. Um, and this is an absolute, it is an arms race at the moment. I mean, this is the fastest production one at the moment, but the Aston Martin DBX 707 is coming out and they're saying that that's going to be the biggest, most powerful, fastest SUV going. Um, like I mentioned, Ferrari are getting involved in the game. And think about other cars that we've reviewed on this channel as well. We've reviewed the Audi RS Q8 and I really like that. I thought that was a really good car. Um, is, this is better than it. Yeah, it is. Is it twice the price? I mean, probably not. It's probably not twice as good in the cold light of day. But, you know, you get this car out on the road and it is it is faster. It is bigger. It is brasher. It's all of those things. It's louder. And, oh, we've, got, we've got a bit of open road. We'll go back into course. So. And it just picks up. So well, it's such a such a good fun car to drive. I don't think you'd get bored of it. You certainly wouldn't get bored of that sound coming. Um, well, one other point to that is you need that head-up display. <laughs> That's so useful for knowing where you're going, um, knowing how fast you're going. Because um, you know, as I mentioned, it's so good in the motorway. It's so smooth. Uh, you can be going a little bit faster than 70 miles an hour, and it's useful just to uh, have that there to rein things in. But in that environment, the adaptive cruise control is really good as well, and it interacts with the um, traffic sign recognition. So if you're going from say a 40 to a 30, it will slow you down so that you're doing 30 miles an hour by the time you get into the 30 mile an hour zone. And when you get out the other side and the speed limit increases, it increases to that speed limit. So that's that's a really useful feature to have as well. Um, back on the B-Road bit as well, sorry I'm skipping around a bit here, but um, it's not the final word in steering feedback. The steering is accurate and you get enough feel to the chassis as well, but it is a big SUV, so is that that's such an important thing? Not really. Um, it's accurate enough and you can enjoy it. Um, but to conclude, to compare it to other super SUVs on the market, um, it's not quite as refined as the Bentley Ventega, but obviously it's more focused on performance. It's, I'd say, slightly more refined than the Audi RS Q8 and better performance than that. So it's definitely a better car, and if you've got that sort of budget, then, you know, the Urus is the pick over those two. Um, if money's no object, which I suspect to many purchases of this sort of car, it's not, um, in which case, congratulations. Um, it's a lot better than something like the Range Rover Sport SVR. Um, that does start to look like the value proposition in the performance SUV market. I mean, it sounds every bit as good as this car as well to give uh, give the Range Rover Sport SVR its dues. They've done a wonderful job of the exhaust on that as they have in this as well. Um, we had the Maserati Levante Trofeo as well last summer. I really like that. Um, it's got a similarly uh, brash engine, you know, the Ferrari V8 unit in that, you know, still stupidly fast. Um, doesn't have the same looks as this, uh, but you know, still a very good car in its own right. I did really like that. That often sort of flies under the radar. It doesn't really enter the conversation too much, but I, I thought that was a really good car. I um, really like the Bentayga, but for entirely different reasons than this. And that's why I said that, that I feel like this has brought out the best of the VW group and what they've done with things. Um, we had the Aston Martin DBX as well last year. Now that hasn't been such a big seller for Aston Martin. I really liked it. As, as an all-rounder, 
it ticks a lot of the boxes. Um, I mean, this is faster, brasher, but it still has the same elements of comfort, and I suspect that's why Aston Martin are about to launch a DBX 707. This is something of an arms race, you know, fastest car wins type thing. Um, where you stand on that, I don't know. I mean, if that sort of thing doesn't bother you, then, you know, get something like Lexus RX, perfectly comfortable family saloon. But if you're after something that does pack a punch, then you've got to be looking within this sort of marketplace, really. And I think this is the best performance SUV that I've driven. I just think it brings everything together so well. I've enjoyed it and liked it a lot more than I thought I would as well. And I was sort of taken in by the looks of it. It is, it is so big and so brash and noticeable and noisy and all of these things, but it, they've done such a good job on it. I mean, it doesn't feel like a crude marketing exercise once you're inside. From this seat, it doesn't feel like a crude marketing exercise as well. I think they've taken so much that's good about the VW group. I think the quality of the fixtures and fittings is Bentley-esque. Elements of the ride quality are Bentley-esque. They've taken that Savage Performance from the RSQ8 and put that in there as well, and they've brought together a really good package with that Lamborghini DNA. I'll mention that again. It does feel like a Lamborghini, and that's probably the biggest compliment you can pay this car, and that's what they were going for. Yeah, I've also mentioned, you know, at times you've been driving around and going, why are people looking at this car? And you go, oh yeah, I am driving a Lamborghini. So it's got that split personality, and, you know, Lamborghini have done an exceptional job on this car. They've produced a really, really good performance SUV. It doesn't feel like a car that they've made for the sake of making it. So, yeah, I would say this is the king of the SUVs. Is it worth double the price of an RSQ8? Probably not, but if you've got the money and you're after a performance SUV and you've got on Isofix and a Lamborghini and all that sort of stuff, oh, it just does an astonishing job. I've been really, really impressed with this car. I'm waffling on now, so I should come to the conclusion. I've liked this car a lot more than I thought I would. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, it's just ticked every box. Um, yeah, if you're after a performance SUV, then this is King of the Hill, no question. Brilliant, brilliant car. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a like, and please also consider subscribing. We've got loads of videos on the channel. We've got loads more coming up as well. Up next, we've got Maserati Ghibli Trofeo, so back to a bit of Italian V8 action. Then we're going all electric. We've got Mercedes EQA after that. Then we've got a McLaren 720S lined up as well. And we've got Ferrari Portofino M as well. So they're all coming up shortly. Um, in a couple of months time, we've got the Audi SQ7 as well. And we're speaking to a few manufacturers about a few other cars as well. So please hit subscribe and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thanks.